Right now, the divide between the real world and the digital world is pretty clear cut. I mean, you're either looking at your physical environment, interacting with people and objects, or you're staring at a screen. It's sort of a mutually exclusive relationship. Meet the company that could change that. Meta has created an augmented reality headset. Unlike the Oculus Rift, which totally immerses you in a virtual reality world, these are augmented reality glasses, so you can still see the real physical world around you with a digital overlay. As you can imagine, that opens up a whole can of worms when it comes to designing a user interface. Here's how it works. Two different cameras, one color and one infrared, map out the real world in front of you. The lens contains two transparent glass screens that sit right in front of your eyes. Meta software projects the digital content onto these screens. Stereo microphones and an inertial measurement unit round out a suite of sensors that record your environment and track your movement through it. Meta was founded just last November. It already has a developer's kit out on the market, and it's completed a Series A fundraising round. Meta might be based in California, but it's got a Canadian connection. So Steve Mann's one of the leading luminaries in augmented reality. He's been doing this uh, for decades. Uh, and he's got one of the leading research labs at the University of Toronto in this space. So a lot of his students uh, have been inspired by him to work on augmented reality, uh, including our CTO, Ray Lowe, who was working in Steve Mann's lab and uh, is, continues to be a Steve Mann student. So. He was one of the founders of the company and he just started walking around the streets of Toronto uh, with augmented reality headset that he had crafted himself and that inspired some of the company co-founders uh, and they reached out to him and, and the rest is history. Meta is moving quickly, but this hardware is in its early stages. It's focused on building a developer community that can help create solutions for specific markets. One early adopter of the AR headset is likely to be manufacturers in the aerospace industry. When the margin for error is zero on parts you're designing, having the ability to simulate a part before you actually make it could save you a lot of time and money. Any other profession that requires a lot of tinkering in AutoCAD will probably be interested in this. So this would be a way to show a client, say, options for what a building would look like, uh, but also when during the construction process, you could render different systems, different layers of the buildings, show the HVAC system, show the sheathing, um, and so show the, con show the building in a way that wouldn't be possible otherwise. It's great to think about the useful applications of augmented reality, but I just have to say that wearing this thing was really cool. I was manipulating floating holograms while interacting with the real environment around me. I felt like Tony Stark in Iron Man. And that's no coincidence, since Meta actually hired the guy that made the graphics for that movie to create its user interface. When we realized that we were going to build a 3D user interface that was no one had ever seen before, it was obvious that we were going to go with somebody like Jace Hansen, who is the guy behind The Hunger Games, Iron Man, The Avengers, all the cool 3D graphics that you see. He's the designer of those, so he's, he's going to be designing our, our 3D user interface as well. So users will be able to interact with that themselves. It will no longer be something you just see in movies. It's something you can have a, and, and experiment with on your own. Sign me up. Now I just need a flying suit, and I'm ready to join the Avengers. For ITBusiness.ca, I'm Brian Jackson. Thanks for watching All Hands on Tech.